Igor Kozlovsky is a famous Ukrainian scientist, historian, yogi, and head of a number of theological organizations in Donetsk. He was detained in Donetsk on January the 27th, 2016. The Kozlovsky family have not seen him since. They have hardly been able to communicate with him or receive any information regarding his deteriorating health. Separatists have accused Kozlovsky of espionage and weapons manufacturing, but have so far failed to provide any evidence of this. He's a well-known person, especially in scientific circles, in the world of religious organizations. And uh, he has a few awards uh, from different countries for his scientific and uh, humanitarian activities. He met uh, uh, Pope Paul II and uh, the main rabbi of Israel. He's not only the scientist, not uh, theologist and uh, culturologist. But uh, he's a person who always tried to establish a dialogue between different religions. And it was one of his main goals. Uh, and he was successful in, in these goals, actually. And we know uh, that in Donetsk, representatives, almost all confessions and uh, religions, they uh, usually meet at uh, his round table conference and uh, the things like this and they all can communicate when he was like a moderator they all can communicate and uh, it was a very unique situation for ukraine and for the world i think so probably he's uh, one of the very rare person in this way that uh, can provide these activities and uh, can make this happen. If we want to have a dialogue, we need to get rid of all the standard words and phrases. We need to live in a valued environment. What are the common values for everybody? Peace, good life and health. And a constructive dialogue which gives us some perspective. We all should be orientated towards our values. Why he was staying in Donetsk? Um, the main reason that uh, he has a uh, ill son, that um, mm, with a broken spine and Down syndrome, and this was the reason he was worried how his son uh, can um, survive during uh, uh, moving from Donetsk somewhere else. That's why he's staying in, in Donetsk. Um, and um, he was a pensioner already, so he didn't work at the moment that he was captured. I don't know, we, we still don't know reason why he was imprisoned. So what happened? So he's uh, just, you know, so for how long is he detained? What's happening to him? What do we know? Uh, he was uh, captured on 27th of January 2016 uh, and since then uh, we didn't have uh, possibility to meet him, not uh, the members of the family, nobody. We only know that he was captured by so-called MGB, Ministry of uh, State uh, Defense uh, in, in Donetsk People's Republic, also so-called. and. Um, we know that uh, he's uh, in prison in Donetsk. So we talked for a few times by phone last year. It was a short period when he was allowed to call. But I, I think this uh, finished uh, at the beginning of December. So we didn't hear what for him, from him starting from the beginning of December last year. How did he so. sound when you talked? You know, he's a really unique person um, in the way how he accepts the, the world around and the reality. And if you ask him, even when he's in prison, if you ask him, how are you doing? He'd say, like, I'm okay. Everything's, everything's okay. Because uh, he's a very spiritual, if I can say so and uh, it's uh, help him uh, to survive and help him 
to stay strong in this situation. And it's really difficult, as, as you can imagine. How do you, do, do, do you know if there were any tortures or something like that, of that kind? Yes, we know that uh, in the beginning, in the first month, there were tortures for sure. They tried to uh, make him say that he is a spy or whatever they try to make him say. I don't know for, for sure, but we know the fact. When the legal system doesn't work, then rule of force succeeds. A man with a gun considers his absolute truth, and then any dissident is under threat. What we also, you know, your, your uncle is also not just the theologist, he's the author of the number books of yoga. Um, it was an area of his interest, uh, I think, from the childhood. I know for sure that he was a really big specialist in the former Soviet Union and people from all over the country came to Donetsk to uh, make some consultations with him. From the very beginning we, we started to communicate with different international organizations about this ca case, but uh, we tried to to make uh, United Nations and OSCE and Red Cross and all this international organization that work in occupied part of Donetsk Oblast to influence the situation, to, to help to find some solutions, but nothing really happened because they had no, they had no influence there, actually. And uh, Ukrainian governmental institution doesn't help also because all, all that uh, they can do is to ask the question during Minsk meeting and it's always the same question and the same answer. I think uh, the only way to make him free, to, to set him free, is to uh, put this question not in a Minsk meeting but uh, in a uh, Normand format. And we uh, send the letters to all the ambassadors of European countries and we, we, we try to uh, reach some American senators and uh, the Council of Europe. Of course, we need to negotiate all, on all levels, at local level as well as with Russia. We are doomed to live here and live peacefully hereafter. So what would be your appeal now? We can reach many people uh, that it was impossible uh, several years ago for example, to communicate with somebody from the government uh, in uh, social media or any kind of uh, social media that we have now. But now, as, as much people as, uh, as possible, I think uh, if they will share this information, uh, it, it could work in the end. Mm -hmm.